On the 22nd of July, 1968, tragedy struck. Ironically, the community had just finished celebrating the 150th anniversary of the establishment of the St. Boniface Mission in 1818, and a number of workmen were busy on the building, doing some painting on the exterior, uh, making some minor repairs to the roof and so on. And unfortunately, a number of these people apparently had been smoking while on the job. And just at the beginning of the noon hour, a fire took root in the attic space of the cathedral. By the time the fire department was summoned and were able to sort of engage the fire, it had advanced far too far within the building, which meant that over a period of about three hours, the cathedral was gutted. It was destroyed by this fire, leaving, of course, only the stone shell. absolutely devastated by the loss of their beautiful cathedral. St. Boniface referred to itself, the municipality, the city, referred to itself as the cathedral city because it absolutely dominated the skyline. Opened in 1908, the St. Boniface Cathedral, which eventually was elevated to the rank of minor basilica, was the largest church in Western Canada. It could hold as many as 2,000 people. Etienne Gaburi, the uh, sort of the renowned uh, Franco-Manitoban architect, was essentially given half a million dollars or $600,000 and told, build us a new cathedral. And the only criteria he had was, build us a new cathedral. We want it on sort of a square plan and it needs to hold about a thousand people, half of what the previous cathedral. What he did was he preserved the bulk of the ruins of the old basilica and built a new modern church within those ruins. So for instance, instead of being sort of a long, narrow church, this one is more on a square plan, which means that the thousand people that sit in it are all a lot closer to the sanctuary and where the altar is. The architect who designed this church, Itzien Gaburi, also has a hobby. He likes to play with light and he likes to play with stained glass. For instance, the scene of the Last Supper is not at all like da Vinci's uh, famous one. You have Christ standing at the head of the table with the bread and the wine in his hands, and the apostles are lined up on either side of the table, 11 of whom have their heads bowed down in respect. But in the bottom left-hand corner of that particular panel, you have one apostle whose face is turned away from Christ, essentially representing Judas. My favorite is Christ before his accusers. He's standing in the middle of this group of sort of crowned and mitered heads. They're all pointing their fingers at him, and it's like they have snakes coming out of their tongues. And he stands in the midst of this as they accuse him with their lies and the false accusations and so on. And he's standing in the middle of this with one finger pointed up towards heaven and sort of the flame of truth over his, uh, over his head. That thing, I think, is really quite cool. So you kind of follow the stations of the cross around. The other items of interest behind the altar are the two statues. You have the statue which represents the risen Christ with his arms outstretched, and beside him is a small cross, and it essentially looks like a plus sign. And what the artist wanted to convey was the triumph of Christ over the crucifixion. In the words of the artist, the crucifixion isn't what's important. The death isn't what, what's important about Christ. What's important about Christ is the resurrection. So he essentially shows, wants to depict the triumph of Christ over death. Hence, a small cross and the resurrected Christ, as opposed to the standard sort of crucifixion scene that you'll see in the, in, in the Catholic Church. And beside that statue of the, rep, of the resurrected Christ, you have Mary. And Mary is there with her hands in this position saying, Behold my risen son. But what's particularly interesting about this statue of Mary is she is, is represented as Our Lady of Red River, not based on some kind of a miracle sighting, but the artist wanted to represent Mary as a Métis woman. If you look closely at the statue, she is wearing moccasins, she has a sash around her waist, and she's wearing a shawl similar to the black shawls that the Métis women used to wear when they attended church in the 1800s. So it's, it's an absolutely spectacular place to visit for, uh, you know, for locals and tourists alike. And the graveyard, of course, has its own story. 
This is where Louis Riel is buried, just in front of the church. And that in itself is a very important and significant um, sort of destination for visitors for various reasons. For every wedding that actually takes place in the cathedral, there's probably about 10 to 15 couples who go to the ruins in order to have their wedding pictures taken.